Okay, so for my project number six, the problem that I decided on choosing was the vehicle routing problem. And this is uh, Chase Kosick. So for the vehicle routing problem, basically it is a NP complete problem, which we were tasked with choosing one of those for which project six we wanted to do. So basically we had a list of NP complete problems to choose from, and this one specifically was the one that seemed most interesting to me and most applicable to my uh, everyday life because I am actually a pizza delivery driver. So I deal with kind of routing uh, deliveries of a sort on like a daily basis at my work and with uh, my other drivers to determine on the best ways to get things where they need to go and as efficiently as possible. And so this problem deals with the routing of vehicles to delivery or visit sets of cities or nodes. And uh, an NP-complete problem is a non-deterministic polynomial problem. And what makes it that is when its solution can be determined in polynomial time. And so as opposed to the traveling salesman, which is a different NP-complete problem, which we studied quite extensively in this class so far in the first five projects, uh, the goal here is not just to find the optimal overall path, but instead we want to dynamically find the optimal path for each vehicle and the deliveries that we give it to take. And so the goal of the vehicle routing problem is to find the optimal paths per vehicle for its route. And uh, determining the routes, the grouping of those routes, can be done by uh, several different methods, such as the location, which is the one that I primarily use in this project. And I did so by sorting it by its XY position to group them together where they made the most sense. But some other ways you could do is uh, by priority or by time, which I also implement towards the end of this presentation. I will show some of that. But I implemented two into mine by giving it a priority queue, basing on when things should be taken. So uh, the method. For this project, we were tasked with building an algorithm capable of solving the vehicle routing problem, as I've been talking about. And we were tasked with using the wisdom of crowds and genetic algorithm combination that we kind of worked on last project number five for the traveling salesman to achieve this. This project also required the inclusion of a GUI or a graphical user interface. And for mine, I decided that I thought it would be the best to leave all the uh, individual paths visible and then have the overall vehicle routing problem solution come up at the end just so you could kind of isolate and see whatever you wanted to see for those paths. So what is a genetic algorithm? A uh, genetic algorithm utilizes genes, individuals, or chromosomes, and populations in order to mimic natural selection. And for mine, uh, the genes were the node objects that I had hold my XY coordinates as well as graphical XY coordinates and distances for each location. And then the individuals or chromosomes were the uh, connections of the cities that then made up the populations. And uh, then lastly, the populations were our generations that were then manipulated using several functions I'll cover in the next slide in order to breed and to evolve our populations. And here in this image, you can see that a gene is just one section of a chromosome or an individual, and then a group of individuals make up the overall population. And here, instead of ones or zeros, this is in the binary, we would have the names of our cities or nodes, which was typically just the numbers they were assigned in the uh, file that we got them from. And uh, one exception to that, actually, uh, the depot I used for this, I decided to make the depot in the middle of my graph, which was 0 .5050. And I just named my depot 9999, just so there would be no confusion with any other things or any uh, trickery with number manipulation in my algorithm that may mess up if I named it just like an actual string such as depot. So uh, the population manipulation I mentioned previously was done through several functions. And here are the four functions, mutate, crossover, tournament, and evolution. And so what mutating does is it randomly swaps two nodes on a random amount of individuals in the population. And this can be set through uh, our mutation rate, which from a previous project, I've determined that having a 0.4 mutation rate made my algorithm run the best. So that's what we will use throughout all of the vehicle routing. And uh, down in the bottom right, you can see an example of before mutation versus after. And basically here, 
this path was chosen to be mutated and two random nodes were selected being two and nine and then they just swapped positions to give more kind of variety in our populations. So next uh, crossover, what that does is it breeds two parents by mixing the routes together, which can be seen in the bottom left. So basically it will take a chunk of the route and kind of swap it with a chunk of the other route in order to give us uh, a child route, which would then be passed on to the next generation. And the tournament uh, function is not actually required to make a genetic algorithm, but it's what I determined I wanted to use for mine. And basically what a tournament consists of is they're used to determine what parents breed and we select a number of individuals and then the best individual out of that tournament will be the parent number one and then for the term tournament number two the best individual from that one will be parent number two and then we breed those in order to get kind of smarter uh, children and the uh, tournament size I used was seven there's no real reason behind that I just picked seven random selections of the population to be chosen and then have tournaments based on that in order to get our uh, our children. So then evolution, that evolves our population by creating and filling out a new population from crossover mutation and, and implementing wisdom of crowds. Some of our uh, expert paths are carried over based on the uh, adjacency matrix and what we make as the smartest path from that. So what is Wisdom of Crowds? Wisdom of Crowds is the concept that a large group of people are smarter together than an individual expert may be for problem solving, prediction, or choosing. And this can be used to help our populations make smarter choices earlier on, kind of helping the genetic algorithm have a basis on what it's doing instead of allowing randomness to kind of prevent it from getting as far as it can get earlier on. And uh, in a genetic algorithm, Wisdom of Crowds is used by forming an adjacency table, which what that is is basically a table of all the times two connections are back to back so basically if like node 2 and node 7 are connected a lot that will be implemented first and our expert solution since that appears to be a good uh, connection since so many of our experts were using it and the way I determined the top percentage to choose for wisdom of crowds and mine was I, I had a variable called wisdom percent that you could set and the best wisdom percent that I found was to be uh, 0.3%, so that's what I will use for most of the data in the vehicle routing problem. And what that is, is just the top 30% are what we use to make our adjacency tables and make our wisdom of crowds operate. So for data, uh, for the vehicle routing problem, we, we gathered our data through the use of several files, and those were files uh, supplied by Dr. Yampolsky in previous projects being random11.tsp, random22.tsp, random44.tsp, random77.tsp, random97.tsp, and random222.tsp text files. And they are just filled with XY coordinates from random cities. And the, the amount of cities coincides to the number and the name of the file, which makes it really easy for us to kind of keep track of. And here's an example of random11 down here. And the top seven lines of that line or that uh, file are kind of just headers and so for my reading code I just had it completely skip over the first seven lines and get to the meat and potatoes of the files which are the nodes and their XY coordinates and the node names being on the far left the X being in the middle and the Y being the third number in each kind of row obviously so here is some actual data. It's an example of running random22.tsp with three trucks, 100 generations, 100 gen population. Then all other variables are held constant. So this was using wisdom of crowds, seven tournament size, mutation rate of 0.4, a wisdom percent of 0.3. And uh, here you can see that each path actually achieves its optimal solution. And the XY coordinates grouping kind of is very evident as you have the right side, the middle, and the left for where the paths are chosen to be. Then here, another example of running on Randall 22, this time with two trucks and all the same variables held constant. These both also achieve their optimal paths, but this time they have more nodes per delivery vehicle. 
And this is just kind of to show how at smaller, say, uh, 15 or less sets of deliveries per vehicle route, the genetic and wisdom of crowds algorithm pretty effectively finds the optimal solution. So I won't do a lot of data testing with that. So here is a graphical or a GUI, uh, just kind of example. And this are all the individual vehicle routes for a random 22 or random 222.tsp, excuse me, run uh, with six trucks, each figure being a truck. And here you can see the routes kind of from the right to the left to the center or right, left, right center to the left uh, separated here and isolated. And these files actually, because they were larger chunks, they didn't necessarily get the best ra uh, route. And there is some crossover in them that you can see, such as figure three, there's a very evident crossover in the middle that if a couple nodes were swapped, it would be an optimal route. But because I only ran 100 generations, they didn't necessarily achieve the best uh, route for each individual. This is just for an example of the GUI. And then on the next slide here, you can see what they all look like put together. So this is what it will give for the vehicle routing problems solution. And you can see each of these from the last slide are now put into one big graph and color coded. And then the way I decided to do color in my GUI, I actually chose to go red, blue, green, pink, black, purple, and then kind of cycle through that so as to not have to deal with random colors giving a lot of ugly or similar colors so that you could tell the differences even if some colors were used twice. And that's what the next slide will show is for 12 vehicles on random 222.tsp, here's what it looks like. And some colors are used multiple times, but it's still pretty evident like that the red on the far right is not the red in the center and that they're separate even though the middle is kind of a little bit of a cluster with this. And for this one, actually because they're broken up into smaller amounts of nodes per vehicle, most of these look like a pretty optimal or decent solutions for the vehicle's route. So next, uh, I decided to examine the uh, number of vehicles versus the fitness. And for this one, this is a run of random97.tsp and with all variables held constant, but the number of vehicles. And so here you can kind of see that starting off with uh, two vehicles, that's our second worst. And then the worst actually ends up being six vehicles, which may seem somewhat surprising, but because of the path from the depot to the farther areas, it makes more sense that so many trucks leaving the depot and coming back would add to your total length though they may get the packages out on a more efficient time. Uh, but here you can see that four vehicles was the actual best solution with the best average, uh, the best minimum length, and with a lower about middle standard deviation. And uh, the main surprise to me here was for runtime, doing more runs of my genetic and wisdom of crowds algorithm actually helped uh, reduce the runtime since instead of dealing with bigger adjacency tables with like like you would have with uh, splitting the 97 into 2 instead of the 97 into 6 that actually makes it slower than running the algorithm multiple times with smaller tables which was interesting to me so here's another example of pretty much the same data but this time with the random 222.tsp file and for this one the best best performing was six vehicles and we could also assume from this that it would probably be uh, better at a higher vehicle count just because of how large of a file this is. This was just mainly to show the similarities from the last uh, slide for the number of vehicles through two to six vehicles. And uh, here you can't see it as well, but you can see the runtime decreasing kind of as the number of vehicles increases. But you can also see from back on the other slide that the standard deviation when you get to higher number of vehicles tends to get smaller since you'll have more consistency and more easily optimized routes. So here's just those two uh, tables kind of plotted against each other to allow you to see the improvement versus the path cost as you add vehicles for files random 97 and random 222 with two to six trucks or vehicles. So uh, the last thing I'll cover is priority packages, which is something that I added in after the initial report, but not the research report. Um, 
and this is to account for the concept of time deliveries and priority deliveries. And I did that so by incorporating a Boolean variable called priority packages to change how the locations are grouped. And what this does is it randomly creates a priority queue for the cities, allowing for a different approach to be used. And this will be displayed on the next slide, but basically by randomly prioritizing the deliveries or timing the deliveries, it allows for you to have kind of more variety than just the X, Y's where almost every single time with a certain number of trucks, you will break it up into the same groups. And so here's an example of random 44.tsp run with uh, priority packages set to true. And each path here is the optimal path for the vehicle's nodes, though they do overlap a lot because this time instead of focusing on their location, we focused on their priority or the time that the orders are made. So this one would be more applicable to something like uh, Amazon Prime deliveries. Say the green is a truck leaving at 9 a.m. So it takes all these deliveries that are already at the facility and ready to go. And then blue is a truck departing at noon. And then finally red is like a truck leaving at 3. So they may overlap a lot, but it's because they're out at different times and the packages are ready or required at different kind of uh I guess just times, yeah. So in conclusion, uh, the vehicle routing problem can be effectively solved with the genetic algorithm and wisdom of crowds approach as displayed through all the data. And uh, this problem has many real world applications, mainly dealing with package delivery for large package handling chains like FedEx, UPS, USPS, and Amazon. Though not only in that application, it could also be for some more like wide scale city related traveling or also, as I mentioned earlier, with my job as a pizza delivery driver, it's interesting to me because of taking things like doubles or triples deliveries when we get busy. And I think that something like this could potentially be implemented into a point of sale system to kind of ease the strain on drivers or in-store people to figure out what goes together. Because in that scenario, you, you have time, you have priority sort of with the time, and you have a location that's a big factor too. So not only would you want to pick just three that are close because one might not be in the oven yet or ready yet. So you may want to take some that are kind of on a line all the way out and then you could come back. So like say right near the uh, pizza shop, there's a delivery that's ready and then there's one about two minutes further than that. You could group those even though it may not make a lot of sense for some other scenarios such as the packages. So overall, this uh, offers a different look at optimization that is not the traveling salesman problem. And the reason for that is instead of just trying to optimize the overall length, because if you were doing so, it would just end up being the traveling salesman problem and you just have one vehicle doing it all to make it the shortest it could possibly be. But instead, it's just optimizing each vehicle and then optimizing the priority of when the packages need to be there so that you can you know, keep keep your job as the Amazon exec or whatever you're doing. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the vehicle routing problem. Thank you.